and welcome, friends, to our telling of the story of the battleship USS New Jersey. We last left her heading back to Majuro in May of 1944. In this, when she returned, she became the flagship for the Pacific Battleship Commander, Admiral Willis Lee. Now, it'd be a real shame if I didn't take a moment to recommend Battleship Commander by Paul Stilwell. It's a biography of Admiral Lee from his time growing up in Kentucky up until his death in 1945. It's a fantastic book. I listened to it on Audible on my commutes to class at school, and it made the cold weather almost enjoyable. So please do go check that out. Alright, to get back to our story about the New Jersey and the rest of the 5th Fleet under Admiral Spruance, they were preparing for one of the most ambitious operations of the Pacific War thus far, the invasion of the Marianas, more specifically the invasions of Saipan, Tinian, and Guam. With these islands being more than 1,000 miles away from any American air base, the carriers escorted by the New Jersey and the other fast battleships would have to provide the air cover for the invasion, consisting of well over 100,000 men. Now, I think it would be interesting to get a better idea of the disposition of the forces involved in what would become known as Operation Forager, at least for the aircraft carriers and battleships. In Task Group 58.1, Carrier Task Group 1, under Rear Admiral Joseph J. Clark, you would have the carriers Hornet, Yorktown, and the light carriers Bellow Wood and Bataan. Then in Task Group 58.2, Carrier Task Group 2, under Rear Admiral Alfred Montgomery, you would have the carriers Bunker Hill, Wasp, and the light carriers Monterey and Cabot, as well as the battleships Iowa and New Jersey. Next, in Task Force 58.3, Carrier Task Group 3, under Rear Admiral John Reeves, you'd have the carriers Enterprise in Lexington and the light carriers San Jacinto in Princeton. With this force would be the battleships South Dakota, Alabama, Indiana, and North Carolina, as well as Washington. In Task Force 58.4, Carrier Task Group 4, under Rear Admiral William Harrell, you would have the carrier Essex and the light carrier Cowpens in Langley. In Task Force 52, the Northern Attack Force, under Vice Admiral William Richmond Turner, you'd have the escort carriers Fanshawe Bay, Midway, White Plains, Kalinan Bay, Kitcoon Bay, and Gambier Bay, along with the older battleships Tennessee, California, Maryland, and Colorado. Finally, in Task Force 53, the Southern Attack Force, under Rear Admiral Richmond Connolly, you'd have the escort carriers Sagamon, Suwannee, Chenago, Corregidor, and Coral Sea, along with the battleships Pennsylvania, Idaho, and New Mexico. On the 6th of June, New Jersey and the rest of Admiral Spruance's ships sailed from Majuro to the Marianas Islands. The fleet would near the Marianas on the 12th of June, 1944, and that night, Japanese aircraft would strike, dropping flares and torpedoes. With it, New Jersey would shoot down one attacking torpedo bomber. The following days would see New Jersey and the other fast battleships bombard Saipan and Tinian, while the older battleships would have to wait until the 14th to do so. When on the 15th, troops would land on Saipan and begin the four-week grind to conquer the heavily defended Japanese island. If I may, shoehorn another great book in here. Fleet at Flood Tide by James D. Hornfisher. He covers the Battle of Saipan in great detail in this book, and it was another of my commuter audiobooks. Sorry about that, but the Marianas Islands were a critical component of the Japanese defense perimeter, especially with Tokyo only being 1,200 miles away. Being in bombing range, another main focal point of the Fleet at Flood Tide, the B-29 Superfortress. With the Japanese doctrine of Kantai Kessen, or decisive battle, still very much in play, they sought to stop the 5th Fleet through committing a great deal of strength in an attack on the American force. With 5 fleet carriers, 4 light carriers, 5 battleships, 11 heavy cruisers, 2 light cruisers, and 28 destroyers, and close to 500 carrier planes and 300 land-based aircraft, while the Americans would have the previously mentioned disposition, including 8 heavy cruisers, 13 light cruisers, and 69 destroyers, the resulting Battle of the Philippine Sea would be the largest carrier duel in history. Due to surveillance from U.S. submarines, multiple of the Japanese task forces were spotted heading across the Philippine Sea, which separates the Philippines from the Marianas Islands. Admiral Spruance would order the New Jersey and six other fast battleships with cruiser and destroyers as escorts to form a battle line under Admiral Willis Lee. But Lee, as well as Spruance, would ignore suggestions to send this battle line in a night action against Japanese forces, Foremost because Lee was concerned about how the battleships would handle themselves in engagement as they spent most of their time escorting carrier task forces, rather than training for, let's say, a night action. Spruins, who might be called cautious, was worried that the Japanese might try to attack the amphibious forces at Saipan, so taking into consideration that his priority should be the protection of the amphibious forces at Saipan rather than chasing the Japanese forces, Spruance would keep the 5th Fleet within supporting range of Saipan and place Lee's battle lines 15 miles in front of Admiral Mitcher's carriers to protect them from any Japanese attack. Jizuburo Ozawa's fleet, instead of going in for a surface engagement, opted for massive airstrikes at long range on the 19th of June, 1944. 
The resulting air battle would see the Japanese planes being decimated by American firepower, with some describing the battle as a turkey shoot, thus the name the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot would be coined. Many of the Japanese planes would attack the battle line under Admiral Lee, with the New Jersey helping to shoot down three of the attacking aircraft, hoping to fulfill the role that Spruance envisioned in their position through protecting the carriers by destroying a majority of the aircraft through their anti-aircraft screen. The Japanese naval air arm would lose 400 planes and critically their pilots, along with two carriers, essentially neutering this once potent wing of the Japanese Navy for the remainder of the war. The night and the following day would see the 5th Fleet pursue the fleeing Japanese fleet, not spotting it until mid-afternoon at extreme range of American carrier aircraft. Nevertheless, Admiral Mitcher would launch a strike against the Japanese fleet that didn't reach it until sunset, sinking another carrier and two oilers along with damaging a number of other capital ships. With the pilots coming back in the dark, New Jersey and the other ships of the 5th Fleet would turn on their searchlights in an attempt to help guide the returning pilots to their carriers. This being a mostly successful effort with the ships helping to rescue pilots who had to ditch their planes due to a lack of fuel. Lee's battle line and Mitcher's carriers would continue to pursue the fleeing Japanese fleet, but it would get away. Although, with this decisive American victory, the New Jersey for the rest of June and July would escort carriers supporting the Army and Marine units fighting on Saipan, invading Tinian and liberating Guam from Japanese occupation. Seeing to rescuing pilots with its own Kingfisher float plane, as well as screening the carrier force as they made their way to strike the Palau Islands. But in August, after over two months at sea, New Jersey would return to an American base at Enoetok, and then head to Pearl Harbor, arriving on August 9, 1944. While in Pearl Harbor, New Jersey's flag quarters were inspected for Admiral William F. Halsey Jr., otherwise known as Bull Halsey. Spruance had felt that New Jersey had an adequate and even spacious flag quarters, but for Halsey's rather large staff, it was determined that it would need to be enlarged and updated to best fit the commander of the 3rd Fleet. New Jersey would be the flagship of the 3rd Fleet for Bull Halsey, which, for clarification's sake, was essentially the same fleet as Spruance's 5th Fleet, but changed designations with the command change. But to get back to the topic at hand, Halsey would command the 3rd Fleet from New Jersey from August 24th, 1944, until January 27th, 1945. On the 24th of August, New Jersey would leave Pearl Harbor carrying Halsey and his staff, carrying him to the Admiralty Islands near New Guinea, conferring there with General MacArthur for the next big operation, the landings at Leyte Island and the beginning of the liberation of the Philippines, of which the fleet dispositions for Operation King 2 would be as follows. Task Group 38.1, Carrier Task Group 1 under Vice Admiral John S. McCain would have the carriers Hornet, Wasp, and the light carrier Cowpens and Monterey. In Task Group 38.2, Carrier Task Group 2, under Rear Admiral Gerald F. Bogan, would be the carriers Bunker Hill, Intrepid, and the light carriers Independence and Cabot, along with the battleships Iowa and New Jersey. In Task Force 38.3, Carrier Task Group 3, under Rear Admiral Frederick Sherman, would be the carriers Essex, Lexington, and the light carriers Langley and Princeton, along with the battleships South Dakota, Alabama, Massachusetts, and Washington. In Task Force 38.4, Carrier Task Group 4, under Rear Admiral Ralph Davidson, would be the carriers Enterprise, Franklin, and the light carriers Bella Wood and San Jacinto. And after the 22nd of October, the battleships Washington and Alabama. On the 8th of September 1944, Halsey and New Jersey would join up with the 3rd Fleet's fast carriers after they had attacked Bonin Island. After, Halsey and the New Jersey would lead the fast carriers all around the Philippines, destroying hundreds of aircraft and dozens of ships. Halsey would send an urgent dispatch to Sink Pack, Chester Nimitz, to recommend that Leyte be invaded in two months ahead of time after his pilots reported little aerial opposition, and thus, with the approval of MacArthur, Nimitz, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Halsey would get his wish, and thus the Leyte landings would occur before the Japanese could train enough pilots to return its fleet to somewhat of a fighting force and reunite their fleet. In the meantime, the New Jersey would help lead the 3rd Fleet to assist the invasion of Peleliu on the 15th of September 1944 then heading to the newly occupied island of Ulithi Atoll in the Caroline Islands. While on the 6th of October, 1944, using a typhoon as a cover, Halsey on New Jersey would leave five other battleships, nine fleet carriers, eight light carriers, 14 cruisers, and 58 destroyers straight into the inner defenses of the Japanese Empire for the invasion of Leyte. The carriers would strike Okinawa and the Ryukyu Islands, while steaming the New Jersey would refuel destroyers and the force would attack the Japanese stronghold of Formosa, today known as Taiwan, off the coast of China. Between the 10th and 14th of October, the carriers and Japanese land-based aircraft would duke it out. The New Jersey would spot a mass Japanese airstrike, which would be routed by the coordinated air defenses of the 3rd Fleet, 
In so doing, Formosa's airfields and well over 500 Japanese aircraft, including more carrier aircraft transferred from the Japanese fleet, would be destroyed. Now, on somewhat of a more humorous note, Radio Tokyo would report that the Third Fleet had been sunk, to which Bull Halsey would send a report to Nimitz that, quote, The Third Fleet's sunken and damaged ships have been salvaged and are retiring at high speed toward the enemy. Now, in the invasion of Leyte, the United States had sent the largest naval force ever assembled. The Americans brought the large Third Fleet under Halsey with his fast battleships and fleet carriers, while there was also the Seventh Fleet under Admiral Thomas Kincaid, who had the older battleships, escort carriers, and amphibious ships used in the invasion of Leyte. Halsey was ordered to cover and support the invasion of Leyte, and to destroy enemy naval and air forces that threatened the Philippine area, and critically, Halsey would amend his orders to, quote, in case of opportunity for destruction of major portions of the enemy fleet, if offered or can be created, such destruction becomes the primary task. This will become critical for understanding the Battle of Leyte Gulf. On the 20th, Halsey would lead preparatory airstrikes against the Philippines, where over 160,000 army troops would land on Leyte. Now, to settle the battle for Leyte Gulf, the Japanese would have several plans for a decisive battle, choosing Hatsu Ichigo, or translated to English as Victory One Operation, which would use Admiral Ozawa's carriers, who had few trained pilots, to bait Halsey in the Third Fleet away from Leyte Gulf, while Japan would use its still potent surface forces in a two-pronged pincer attack, with Admiral Takeo Kurita heading through the San Bernardino Strait, and Admiral Shoji Nishimura would head through the Surigao Strait into Leyte Gulf and destroy the American amphibious ships there. The Japanese would commit a vast majority of their surface fleet, including its most modern battleships, the Yamato, and her sister ship, the Musashi. The resulting Battle of Leyte Gulf would be the largest battle ever fought at sea, involving around 200,000 sailors and airmen, about 1,000 aircraft, and nearly 300 major warships, along with numerous other ships. All the while, during this action, the most powerful American surface forces were nowhere near the area of Leyte Gulf. As aboard the New Jersey was Admiral Halsey, making some of the most difficult, hard-pressed, and very much debated decisions of the Second World War. If that wasn't a setup, I don't know what is. I know I've said this before, especially in my series on the Gneisenau, it's very hard to summarize these actions and engagements into a concise video. I try as much as I can to do so, but it's pretty difficult when you're dealing with a topic as complicated as the ones we've talked about thus far. So in the following parts, we will continue this epic tale of USS New Jersey and her long service with the United States Navy. Until next time, my friends, thank you all and have a good week.